Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. What's up, Bills fanatics? Welcome back to another week of the Buffalo Fanatics podcast. I am your host, Fern Bannatine. And we have a lot to cover this week. We are going to get you ready for preseason game two this Friday evening when we take on the Carolina Panthers in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Bills are already in Charlotte this week, having some joint practices with the Panthers. And it looks like Bills Mafia and the Buffalo Fanatics have shown up in droves to cheer on the Buffalo Bills this week in Charlotte. Always good to see Bills fans representing So to get you prepped for the game, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to have my eyes on during this preseason game in terms of Bills players. Uh, We're also going to give a little bit of a rundown of the Carolina Panthers, a team we're fairly familiar with because, of course, Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean came over from Carolina, and we have a tendency to pick up a lot of former Carolina Panthers players and retreads because of the familiarity that this front office and coaching staff has with those players. This is a habit that we did not break this week by bringing in Captain Munnerlyn, a former Carolina Panthers nickel cornerback. We will discuss Munnerlyn in a little bit, and aside from him, we'll talk about some of the roster churning we've been doing this week, a few new injuries to discuss. Uh, What I'm going to do is spend the first half of the show talking, uh, reviewing that preseason week one win, and some of the notable player moves, including the injuries and the signings we referred to. And then the second half, we'll dive into that preview of our upcoming game versus Carolina. So first and foremost, I did want to quickly share my thoughts about last week's win versus the Indianapolis Colts. We're going to go over it fairly quickly because I think it's been fairly well covered by the other kind folks at Buffalo Fanatics and by many other Buffalo fan sites as well. But I do want to go over what I saw with my own eyes. And specifically, I want to talk about a few players, or the players that impressed me the most uh, during our first preseason game. And if you listened to the last podcast, I said I would keep be keeping my eye on Ed Oliver, and I want to start with our prized first round draft pick. I know that he's been heaping some praise, or praise to some extent, following that first preseason game, but I was actually extremely impressed. I even want to highlight it a little more than it's been highlighted previously. I watched every snap of Oliver, all 11 snaps, and uh, first of all, I'll say that that elite short area quickness that he displayed in college was in full effect in his first uh, NFL preseason game, and in small sample size, of course. Uh, Early on, he had an almost sack of Jacoby Brissett where he overran the play. A few reps after that, or a few series after that, I noted another play where he just demonstrated that closing speed again. I already kind of knew that it existed um, from his college days, but I did want to see, just with his size limitations, how it would translate to the NFL in his first preseason game, and I was not disappointed. Aside from that, he also showed his power. Um, most of you have may have seen by now, if you've been watching any highlights, that one particular rep when he bull rushed Quentin Nelson. I wouldn't say he got the best of him, but it was nice to see that he could stand his ground against a player like Nelson, a guy who dominated defensive tackles all of last season, and I think that makes it all the more impressive. He was doing this against one of, if not the best guard in the NFL at this point, or at least he's getting to that point. And Oliver, quite frankly, had a few really good reps where he beat Nelson, and that is no small feat. Now, he didn't dominate Nelson each and every snap. Nelson had his own on a few of those reps. But I think ultimately, it was just nice to see uh, with my own eyes, just confirm what we saw in college, that short area quickness, that power, and just that it doesn't look like those size limitations are going to have any effect whatsoever if, I guess, if 11 reps in two defensive series are any indication. Now, I want to stay on the defensive line. And talk about another player that I I was impressed with and I think most of you have heard about. And that's Bill's seventh round draft pick defensive end, Daryl Johnson. Of course, he had a sack and he had a few other really impressive reps. And just based on those reps, I think I can uh, squarely say that Daryl Johnson is going to be my preseason crush this year. I have one of these every year. Uh, But shout out to Rico Rombaloni, who actually sent a clip after Daryl Johnson's sack of another play where he used his length to split a gap and close in on the quarterback. 
It was a really disruptive play, one of those plays that gets you really excited. Actually, with Johnson, I'm getting a little bit of a Marcus Davenport feel from him. If those of you are unfamiliar with Davenport, he was drafted by the Saints last year out of a very small school, the University of Texas San Antonio. And he was extremely raw coming up with the Saints, who have had a pretty good track record with drafting lately, traded uh, a 2019 first-round draft pick to move up to select him in the 2018 draft. Uh, Davenport showed some real flashes his rookie year, and he's slated to start this year for the Saints. And I think Daryl Johnson is a very similar player where he's a small schooler, still pretty raw, still has to put on some size, but he's got the same type of tall, lanky, uh, Gumby-like frame, pretty decent wingspan, pretty good athleticism. And I can see if he puts on some strength and builds some base power. I think Johnson has a chance to be something in this league. Now, I know it's a very small sample size. Again, it's only one preseason game. Uh, But I think we're already at the point where uh, we probably can't sneak a guy like Johnson onto the practice squad. uh, Just given the position value and (laughs) just given what he showed in those limited reps. I don't think he would make it onto the practice squad. Other teams might be interested in snatching him up. All in all, a very impressive debut for the 7th round draft selection. Now for the third player that I want to highlight uh, uh, from the previous preseason game, I actually want to stay on the defensive line once again and talk about Shaq Lawson. He started in place of Jerry Hughes, who got a rest day out of the first preseason game, and he was impressive, specifically in contained. He had a few pretty decent uh, snaps where he was able to stop the run. As he's evolved as a player, um, it seems to be his calling card, he's... Never going to be the greatest dynamic pass rusher, but he really is a good run stopper, and he demonstrated that again in this game. And the fact that I'm highlighting three defensive line players uh, just goes to show I feel much better about our defensive line, particularly our first team. The Colts couldn't get anything going against that defensive line, and I think Lawson has a, I mean, as our third defensive end, because Trent Murphy showed well this game as well. He had that almost sack early on. I think uh, Lawson... Just demonstrated that we, we're going to have a pretty solid three-headed monster at defensive end, and I feel a lot better about our defensive end situation just after seeing this one preseason game than I have previously. And I think the coaching staff and the front office may feel better as well, judging by the move they made after this game. We'll get into the trade of Eli Harold in a little bit, and then the defensive lineman we picked up in Sam Acho. Now, one player I do want to highlight on offense, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the game that Devin Singletary had. He's a guy that I mentioned last podcast that has had a really impressive training camp. And before we drafted Singletary, I had commented on uh, the juxtaposition against uh, what I saw on tape with Singletary. I thought he had extraordinary tape uh, in college at Florida Atlantic, and then the testing numbers just didn't match w- uh, what we what he had demonstrated on tape. So I really wanted to see how that might translate to the NFL, whether uh, he's just one of those guys that tests poorly and plays much better on the football field, or he's one of those guys that just may not have the physical attributes to make it in the NFL despite his great college tape. And I think the former is starting to prevail, at least after one preseason game, because he looked electric out there. And the one thing actually that impressed me with him that I was a little bit surprised with is that low body power. He had that really nice run where he put on, put up a little a few spin moves and was able to keep those legs churning against uh, NFL caliber defensive linemen. And that was a really good sign. And all in all, I think uh, I was more impressed than not impressed by our first preseason game with what I saw with uh, that first team in particular and then the second team as well, just showing again how much depth we have uh, this year compared to previous years. Uh, we pulled out a 24-16 to win in that game. And I'm, I'm not, uh, my excitement for the upcoming season has not swayed after that first game. Of course, recognizing that it is only preseason. And now I'm excited to watch preseason game two. And we are going to preview that game in just a minute or so. But I do want to talk about some of the injuries and the transactions we made over the last week. And we start with the unfortunate news that uh, cornerback EJ Gaines has been placed on injured reserve. Uh, very unfortunate for him and the team. It's just a guy that cannot seem to stay healthy. Uh, We're hearing it's a groin slash core muscle injury. And it looks like very similar to our offensive line. A position of great depth is now taking a bit of a beating uh, with the Gaines injury. I still do think we're pretty solid at cornerback with threesome of uh, Tredavious White, Levi Wallace, and Teron Johnson. And I think Kevin Johnson makes a pretty good fourth cornerback. And they've been playing playing him inside and out. Uh, to prepare him for that role, I think. 
Uh, but still, you, you do hate to hear when a guy is out for the year, especially a guy like Gaines who just has always been really solid when he's on the field. In fact, he had a Pro Bowl caliber year with us a few years back, but he, he just can't stay on the field, unfortunately. Now, the other big news this week, uh, right up, soon after our first preseason game, was a trade. We traded Eli Harold, who did not look good that first preseason game. And I think after seeing uh, both Daryl Johnson and Mike Love, who I haven't spoken about, who I thought played pretty well in that first game as well, a little bit of incon- a few inconsistencies, but overall it was looking up for him. Uh, so they've traded Eli Harold in light of the performance of those two young defensive ends. And the player we get in return is offensive tackle slash potentially offensive guard Ryan Bates, who played at Penn State University and was signed as an undrafted free agent with the Philadelphia Eagles. So we've traded with the Eagles. Uh, Bates is a guy that I scouted following his 2018 season when I was doing my review for the 2019 draft. And I saw a tackle who was a pretty good college player. He had some pretty good tape in 2018. But I didn't think he had the physical attributes to remain a tackle in the NFL, uh, just lacking size and length. I also wonder whether his strength can hold up at the guard position in the NFL. Uh, Most likely the Bills are planning to keep him at tackle, given the injury to Adrian Waddle. I believe Sean McDermott or Brandon Bean, one of them alluded to that earlier this week. Uh, So in in all likelihood, they're bringing in this guy for an audition to see if he could impress enough to potentially man one of those swing tackle positions. Uh, He was definitely... A pretty good pass blocker in college, so that's his really his forte at this point. Uh, when I scouted him, I had an undrafted free agent grade slapped on him, but I would say probably closer to the priority free agent area. I just think he's a few years away in terms of building up the requisite strength to play at the NFL level, and I do wonder if he's just too limited in the size category to be an asset as an NFL tackle in this league. Uh, But you can't fault the Bills from bringing in another tackle, uh, just given that we were pretty solid at the defensive end position. And I think it suits us better to bring in bodies at tackle that have a potential to uh, play a role on this team. We've also made a few other acquisitions and brought in quite a few players uh, over the last week. The most notable other acquisitions being defensive end Sam Acho and cornerback Captain Munderland, a former Carolina Panther. (laughs) Go figure. Now with Acho, I've heard some talk that he might just be a camp body in some people's minds. But I do want to highlight that this guy has demonstrated that he can play at the NFL level. He is really your prototypical uh, backup defensive end. He's not a very dynamic pass rusher, uh, but he's been good enough to step in and get some legitimate playing time when he played with the Bears and before that the Arizona Cardinals. He was a pretty good college player, uh, and from what I've heard, he's a pretty good locker room guy as well. It uh, seems like he was a bit of a leader with the Bears, so he'll probably fit into the process type metal- mentality here in Buffalo. Now, the biggest issue with Akcho over the last few years, and this is going to sound repetitive, but he's had trouble staying healthy. So that will definitely require some monitoring. But I think overall, the the Bills are bringing in this guy. I don't think he's just a camp body. I think they're going to bring him in to perhaps create some competition and maybe push some of those young guys and maybe if he can demonstrate that he's healthy and that he uh, has a strong locker room presence, he does have a pretty decent shot at making this roster. Another guy we brought in is another former Carolina Panther, and that's the aforementioned veteran cornerback, Captain Munnerlin. It's not surprising that we brought in some additional cornerback death given the injury to Gaines. And Munnerlin's a guy who over his career has been a above average inside cornerback. He's been a guy that was sought after when he hit free agency and he had signed with the Minnesota Vikings for a few years uh, before returning to the Carolina Panthers where he's played the last two years. Uh, he's probably not as effective as he was early in his career and he's probably only strictly a slot cornerback at this phase in his career. Of course we have Teron Johnson in the slot so if anything if he does make this roster I think he's more Another one of those depth players that we bring in in case there are more injuries. And it leaves us with an NFL caliber player who's demonstrated that he can play in this league previously. Uh, Like Acho, I don't think there's any guarantees that Marlon makes this roster as well. Again, he might be brought in somewhat as a camp body or somewhat as to create competition and push some of those young guys. And I, I honestly don't have any problem with bringing in guys like Acho and Marlon, veterans who've played in this league for quite a while. Never have a problem with bringing in talented players. You do kind of hope that the young guys uh, beat some of these guys out just because the young guys have 
world of potential, whereas these guys, uh, their ceiling is fairly limited at this point in their careers. Uh, so we'll have to keep a close eye on both the defensive line and the cornerback position to see how it all plays out uh, during the preseason. All right, so I want to spend the second half of this show, of course, previewing Friday's second preseason game against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, what I thought we'd do is we'll scout the Carolina Panthers first, and then I'll jump into what I'm looking for from the Bills in this second preseason game, uh, which players I'll be most focused on. First of all, as we mentioned, I'm very familiar with this Carolina Panthers team, at least a lot of their former players, because we've obviously been snatching up a lot of those players. And when I look at this Carolina Panthers roster, I find them a fairly unique team in that they don't ever seem to draft extremely well. They don't seem to have the deepest team, uh, but they do manage to uh, have some moderate success. Of course, back in 2015, they went 15-1 and one and made a Super Bowl appearance. And then they had a down year and they followed that up with a 2017 season when they went 11-5. and five. And then last year, they struggled a little bit again, going 7-9. and nine. They had uh, plenty of trouble protecting their star quarterback, Cam Newton, last year. Uh, but overall, I think this is a pretty solid team with a pretty good nucleus. Uh, they have their franchise quarterback in place and Cam Newton, who will always give you a chance to win. I believe we mentioned that he is kind of the benchmark, at least the low-level benchmark for what we want John, Josh Allen to become. Uh, they have a star running back in place now in Christian McCaffrey, who... Is really has really become the focal point of that offense. He had just short of 2,000 total yards last year, 13 touchdowns. He caught over 100 balls. So that's a pretty good nucleus they have there on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, they have defensive tackle Quan Short and then star middle linebacker Luke Keekley, who may be the best in the game. So well, I think the, with those four players, you have a pretty solid nucleus, and they seem to always give the Panthers a chance to win football games. Uh, on the offensive line, they'll have Daryl Williams returning back from injury. They drafted a young offensive tackle in Greg Little, who I love his physical upside. I do think he's going to have, he's, there's going to be a bit of a transition as he learns to be a little more consistent with his technique. For that matter, it does look like he's going to start on the bench with Daryl Williams manning the left tackle spot and Morgan Moses on the right side. Uh, they also like the Buffalo Bills. They signed a nice center in the offseason in Matt Paradis, who a lot of Bills fans and prognosticators thought might be a guy that we go after instead we chose to go after Mitch Morse on the receiver front it seems like the Bills are following a similar blueprint as the Panthers whereas they've revamped their wide receiver core instead of those bigger wide catch radius targets like Calvin Benjamin and Devin Funches they're going after the smaller shiftier guys they drafted DJ Moore last year in the first round he had a really nice rookie season they're expecting big things from 2017 second round pick Curtis Samuel. Samuel had an excellent training camp and a lot of people around the organization think he's going to be a breakout player this year so he'll probably get some playing time in this game and he'll be a player to keep our eyes on especially to see how he matches up against our linebacker core that we're hoping for big things from and then they have their pretty solid underneath target in Greg Olson who's back for another, yet another year. Behind Olsen at tight end, they have a young draftee from last year, and Ian Thomas, who showed some flashes last year. And I recall him from the 2018 draft where I thought he was a really good athlete who just needed to refine his route running a little bit and might have a future as a dynamic uh, tight end in this league. So we'll see how his development continues. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, well, the Carolina Panthers are a team that are switching from a 4-3 base to more of a 3-4 look this year. And they look like they have a bit of a formidable front seven building. They have Quan Short, who we mentioned earlier. They signed Gerald McCoy, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, to a one-year contract. And then in the middle, they have longtime uh, nose tackle who's bounced around the league with a few teams, uh, Don Terry Poe, who is a huge man and a pretty good athlete as well. Then at the linebacker position, of course, they have Keekley in the middle. They have a very underrated outside linebacker slash defensive end in Mario Addison, who... Nobody seems to know about, but he seems to put up those 8-10 to 10 sacks every year. On the other side, they have a pretty decent pass rusher in Bruce Irvin, who's been around the league for a while. And the third string linebacker, who is likely going to end up being a starter when the regular season starts, is first-round draft pick and uh, training camp standout Brian Burns, who's looked every bit the part that he looked last year at Florida State and then during the pre-draft build-up. Panthers fans and prognosticators are extremely excited about Burns, and for good reason. He went out in his first preseason game 
and showed what he can do. He had two sacks in a half of football. Actually, it was two sacks in 10 snaps only. He also displayed some good run-stopping ability in that game, which has generated a whole ton of excitement in Carolina. So Burns is a guy that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on this game just to see how dynamic he is. He's a guy that I thought the Bills may consider with that ninth pick overall in this draft. Uh, we were looking at defensive ends in addition to defensive tackles. And then in addition to Burns, the Panthers actually have another nice outside linebacker who's been flashing in training camp and in the preseason. And that's Marquise Haynes, last year's fourth round draft selection out of Old Miss. He also had two sacks in that first preseason game. Probably more of a situational pass rusher. He doesn't weigh that much and I don't think he's a good run stopper at this point in his career. But he's a guy to watch. And then rookie Christian Miller out of Alabama. So this team is just loaded with young and veteran pass rushers. And that formidable defensive line, I think this is a really good front seven. (laughs) The more I look at it, the more I'm really liking it. Now in the secondary, their secondary isn't as solid. I think it's an average secondary. They have two pretty good cornerbacks in James Bradbury and last year's rookie Dante Jackson. I thought their biggest sore spot was that free safety position, but they've since shored that up with the signing of Trey Boston in the offseason. They also have a young safety named Rashawn Golden. Uh, who was drafted out of Tennessee last year, who seems to be having a pretty good training camp. And then at strong safety, they have a pretty solid veteran in Eric Reed. So overall, I think this is a pretty good defense. This is a pretty good team. I think this is a team that's going to contend for the playoffs. I think it starts with Cam Newton, but looking at that defense, I think they're going to have a bounce back from last year's 7-9 and nine year. As long as Newton stays healthy and they can protect him, I think this is another solid team that will have success in the regular season. The last thing I'll say on the Panthers is uh, if you're looking for a bit of a deeper sleeper to keep your eyes on this Friday, uh, they have a young cornerback named JV and Elliott who's really been pushing uh, for playing time in training camp. He's actually been seeing some first team reps. He's played so well that a lot of the Panthers beat writers think he may have the inside edge on the starting nickel slot. I anticipate that he will get quite a bit of playing time in this game as the Panthers front office continues to further evaluate him so if you enjoy kind of watching the underdogs perform whether they're on the bills or the panthers jv and elliot might be a guy to keep your eye on in this game now if we turn our attention back to the buffalo bills uh, going into the second preseason game well first and foremost it's going to be the first time that we see LaShawn mccoy in action so all eyes especially my <laughs> set of eyes is going to be on mccoy And I don't anticipate that he's going to get too many carries. He'll probably play a few series uh, similar to what Frank Gore played during that first preseason game. Uh, But I'll be looking to see if we can catch a glimpse of the old LaShawn McCoy to see if he still has a bit of bounce in his step and he'll be running behind a new look offensive line, a much more stout interior. And we believe McCoy should be fully healthy uh, as opposed to last year when he was banged up most of the year. So Let's look and see with those limited carries that he does get if we can see uh, some of the old LaShawn McCoy. I'd be really happy to see if he can break off a long run or at least show some of that those trademark cuts that we've seen in the in the past. But I'm going to keep a close eye on the offensive line in this second preseason game and in particular the starting five. It's not the sexiest position to watch but it's going to be extremely important to A if we're going to protect our young quarterback Josh Allen and B, just with all the injuries mounted up, we want to see that offensive line start to round into shape. A player on the offensive line that I'm going to pay a, a specific attention to is Cody Ford, our rookie offensive guard slash tackle. I thought he really struggled that first preseason game. He got pushed back a bit on some of those first early reps. And looking back at those reps, I think it was mostly a technique issue. I find that he starts off abnormally high in his stance, so I think if he can be coached to get a little bit lower... I think he could start to make some progress. He definitely didn't stand out as much at tackle, which is a good thing when offensive linemen don't stand out. And it looks like he'll be starting back at guard for the second preseason game. So I'm going to have a very close eye on watching the progression of Cody Ford during this game. And then after McCoy and the offensive line, I think what I'll be watching most is the those outstanding position battles. Some of the battles that I was already watching in that first game I will continue to have an eye on the defensive line and in particular the defensive end position. I'm really excited to see Daryl Johnson again just to see if he can continue to make plays. Uh, The same for Mike Love to see if he can be a little more consistent out there. You can definitely see him continuing to progress. And then I want to see our new player Sam Acho if he does get some playing time and to see how he compares to some of those young defensive ends he's battling against. 
And then finally, the last position that I'll be keeping a close eye on is the secondary, where we have a few position battles going on as well, mostly with backups. But I do want to see the our new addition in Captain Munnerlyn. He should know the system pretty well, but I want to see if he can step in and have an effect and show that he hasn't lost a step. Uh, I think at the safety position, we have quite a few players vying for some backup roles. It looks like behind starters Mika Hyde and Jordan Poye that Kirk Coleman should be a veteran presence and he'll probably make the team as our third safety. Uh, but then we have Saran Neal, who looked excellent in OTAs, particularly in a blitzing role. We have Dean Marlowe, who knows the system pretty well, had a nice interception last game. He's a player that I, I really like his feistiness and passion for the game, if he can keep his head on and not take any dumb penalties, which he did last preseason. And then we have Jaquan Johnson as well, our sixth-round draft pick out of Miami, who actually I thought played pretty well in the first preseason game, against mostly against third stringers, of course. Uh, but it's a bit, of a, a bit of a crowded backfield at the safety position, and, I, and again, it really just demonstrates the crazy amount of death we have on this team compared to years past. I think this year, compared to years past, we're going to end up cutting a few players who end up on NFL rosters and may play valuable roles with other teams during the season. I just see, see too many guys in the second and third string on this roster who have impressed me enough that I think that they can be on NFL teams. All right, that is going to be a wrap for this show. Hope you guys all enjoy the game on Friday nights when the Bills go into Carolina. I'm sure a lot of current Bills will be happy to go back to Carolina because many of them played for the Panthers over the years. They probably have strong ties in Carolina. As we record this podcast, there's currently some joint practices between the Bills and the Panthers going on in Charlotte. Of course, Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean are going back to their old stomping grounds, so it should be a pretty fun uh, preseason week two. And we'll be back next week to discuss this game and look ahead to preseason week three. Uh, So until next week, go Buffalo Bills.